The Fire Pit Spark Igniter Kit comes with three main components. The spark module, the igniter probe, and a grounding wire. For this demonstration, we are using a metal fire pit, which is really what these spark kits are designed for. If your fire pit is stone or brick, you'll want to install a metal plate adapter that supports this igniter kit. Click the link above to view our ready to install valve and igniter brackets. Start off by making sure your mounting hole is three quarters of an inch in diameter. Remove the push button and the tension nut. Set the spark module into the three quarter inch hole from the back side and reinstall the tension nut. Insert a AAA battery with the positive side toward the button spring. Make sure the spring seats on the battery properly and hand tighten the push button. This should thread on easy, so if it's difficult, make sure you're not cross threading the cap. Once the battery is installed, you should be able to push the button and hear the clicking sound of the spark, as well as see an actual spark on the back side of the spark module. If you're not seeing this, double check that the battery is inserted correctly, that it is indeed a new battery, and that the spring didn't fall out by accident. Next, it's time to install the igniter probe. Make sure the igniter hole on your burner pan is a half inch in diameter. This should be approximately one to one and a half inches away from the outermost fire ring, whether on the inside or the outside, with the goal of the probe being right next to a burner hole. There are two nuts securing the adjustable probe to the igniter probe. Remove the bottom nut, feed the wire down the half inch hole, and set your igniter probe in place. This is a good opportunity to adjust the top nut to position the adjustable probe to the right height, keeping in mind the height of the future media placement. Flip the pan on its side and feed the bottom nut back onto the wire and tighten to the pan. This will securely position your igniter probe. Now it's time to attach the grounding wire. Loosen one of the nuts that's holding the igniter plate in place and use the existing screw to fasten the grounding wire. If you're using your own pan, you'll want to drill a hole and attach using a screw and a nut. This is a critical step since without the grounding wire, your igniter system will not work. Angle the grounding wire down and away from the pan to prevent it from overheating. Attach both wires to the back side of the spark module. It doesn't really matter which wire connects to which prong. Once you set your burner pan back in place, it's time to adjust and tune the system. We will demonstrate a few different scenarios that will keep your igniter from working properly and how to adjust accordingly. Here's an example where the igniter probes are too far apart. When we push the spark button, you'll notice that the spark is acting erratic and is not concentrated at the tip of the probes. To solve this, simply bend the adjustable probe closer to the fixed probe. These should be approximately a quarter inch apart. Now adjusted, you can see that the spark is concentrated at the probe tips, which is exactly what we want. Another necessary adjustment is to align the fire ring and igniter probes. If you fail to do this, gas might be flowing out of the burner, but if the gas isn't aligned with the spark, it will have difficulty igniting. Simply turn the fire ring or angle the igniter probe until they are right next to each other. Once everything is adjusted properly, you should be able to light your fire pit burner. Make sure to turn the gas on slowly. This is quite possibly the most common mistake made. If the gas is coming out of the burner too quickly, the force of the gas is too much for the spark to grab hold of and light. The solution is simple. Start the gas slowly and it should light right away. Once lit, feel free to slowly turn up the gas. You might think of it like starting a car. There's no need to have the gas pedal floored to start it. Rather, the low idle position is best for initial startup. Once you've tested the igniter a few times and you're confident it's set up properly, it's time to add your favorite fire pit media. In this video, we use Starfire Glass Fire Drops. Click the link above to view some great fire glass options for your fire pit. Make sure to not completely bury your igniter prongs. If covered, your fire pit may not light. The tips need to be exposed to oxygen in order to get a good spark as shown here. That's it. We hope this demonstration of our spark igniter kit helped you with your fire pit installation. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or call our sales team and we'll be happy to help you with your custom fire pit project. If you found this video helpful, make sure to fire up the like button and subscribe to get updates on all new videos.